This time, instead of dealing with historical incidents, I will explain about Japanese villages. It may not be very interesting, but I hope you will see me through to the end. The technological advances since the Industrial Revolution have diversified the occupations of our human race. However, even at the beginning of World War II, 50% of our ancestors were engaged in agriculture. 80 years earlier, at the end of the Edo period, 90% of the people made their living by farming. Yes, human history is made up of villages. Even today, people in various countries have their own unique personalities. I think that people in the West have a tendency to clearly state their opinions and make their conclusions clear. In Japan, on the other hand, there is a culture of guessing. In Japanese conversation, there are many expressions that use somewhat ambiguous words and make it difficult to understand the conclusion. However, the receiver of the conversation may be able to understand the hidden meaning of the words and communicate well with the other party. This may be largely due to the nature of the linguistic language, but it is also largely due to the nature of the village in which the people live. What kind of village and what kind of lifestyle did your country's ancestors live in? Starting from this issue, we will trace the history of Japanese villages from the AI period to the Edo period. However, there are few descriptions of ancient villages, and what we do know about them is not that much. In this issue, we will briefly introduce the history of ancient Japan. In a previous video, we discussed the Jomon period, which lasted more than 10,000 years. During the Jomon period, people still lived by hunting and gathering. Therefore, they did not accumulate wealth and lived a peaceful life without any gap between the rich and the poor. Then, 3,000 years ago, rice cultivation was introduced from mainland China. Rice cultivation spread throughout the country, marking the beginning of the AI period. Creating rice paddies requires manpower. This is why the settlements of the AI period became larger than those of the Jomon period. Rice, which could be preserved, made the difference between the rich and the poor. Those who have things have come to have a great deal of say and power. People in leadership positions emerged. Eventually, they became the power in the village. In addition, the rice that could be stockpiled became a source of conflict. Human bones excavated from this period show a sharp increase in the number of bones thought to have been harmed. As a result, villages of the AI period began to set up settlements on higher ground, dig ditches, and build fences to further protect themselves from enemy attacks. Villages began to fight each other and create larger and larger forces. This larger force would eventually create a country. The first mention of Japan appears in the Chinese history book The Book of Later Han. This is the first mention of Japan to appear in history. It is said that an envoy from Japan came to Han to pay tribute. A gold seal was found on Shiga Island in Fukuoka, Japan, confirming that this description was correct. This indicates that the king was recognized as the king of Japan by the great powers of China, and is a sign that the king was trying to make this country superior to others. As time progressed, around the latter half of the second century, there is a description of Japan in a Chinese book called Weiji. It is said that at that time, Japan was in a state of great turmoil as various nations were fighting amongst themselves. It is said that peace came to Japan when a confederation government was formed with Himiko of Yamataikoku as its head. Himiko was a woman and a sorceress. There is still an ongoing debate as to where in Japan the Yamataikoku existed. Some say it was in the Kyushu region, while others say that the Yamataikoku was located in the Kinki region and later became the Yamato regime. The messenger offered slaves as tribute to China suggesting that there was a clear difference in status within the country. Then, in the middle of the 3rd century, the emergence of a powerful king is recognized. It was the appearance of giant tombs. Kings had huge tombs built as a way of demonstrating their power. This was the beginning of the Kofun period. By this time, conflicts in various parts of Japan were coming to an end, and a huge regime emerged. This is the emperor's regime that continues to the present day. 
the 15th Emperor Odin is the one whose existence is certain at the present time. He is believed to have been a late 4th or early 5th century figure. In this period, we can see that many migrant people came to Japan from China and the Korean Peninsula. This was a period of great change in the Japanese way of life. Technologies for building Kofun tombs, refining iron, and many other things were introduced to Japan. It was also during the Kofun period that writing was introduced. In the 4th century, the Yamato regime became a major power and is known to have been involved in foreign wars. The Gwangaido Monument in Korea states that Kukuryo and Japan fought because of Japan's growing influence on the Korean peninsula and its taking Baekje of Korea as a vassal. This indicates that the Yamato regime was powerful enough to unify almost all of Japan at that time and to have bases overseas. However, I find it hard to believe that they could have sent a large number of soldiers to the Korean peninsula to wage war overseas at that time. The Korean academic community seems to deny that there was any Japanese territory in Korea. In the 6th century, the Yamato regime underwent significant growth from a local to a national government. Powerful clans such as the Mano, Odomo, and Soga were involved in the administration of the government, and it became a strong government. Around this time, Buddhism was introduced from Korea. The pro-Buddhist Soga clan and the anti-Buddhist Mananabi clan clashed violently, and the pro-Buddhist Soga clan won the battle. As a result, the Soga clan gained so much authority that they even surpassed the emperor. Emperor Soshun was assassinated by the Soga clan. He became the only emperor to die by murder. The Soga clan was assassinated by Kamatari Nakatomi later Fujiwara clan and Emperor Nakatayo later Emperor Tenji. The Yamato regime, which had been a coalition of powerful clans and emperors, was reborn as a state centered on the emperor from this point on. This is called the Taika Reformation. It was also at this time that the use of the era name Gen began, following the example of the Chinese. I have tried to explain the flow of events up to the Asuka period in a rather general way. Explanations about people's lives will be covered in the next story starting from the Ara period. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe to the channel and click the like button.